Hello everybody, my name is Greg Sprunk. I own Superior Cleaning Equipment with offices in Phoenix and San Diego. We are gonna go over today some of the kind of do's and don'ts of pressure washers, hot and cold. We get these questions asked once in a while. If you don't know, we're one of the largest dealers in the country for cleaning and environmental equipment, including Landa, Karcher, Factory Cat, um, JRI, GenFab, things of that nature. And we're in our demo bay here in Phoenix. It's almost done. We've got to do some more work to it and some logos where we've got different pieces of equipment laid out. And today we're going to talk about, in this video, starting and stopping a hot water pressure washer. I know it sounds kind of remedial, um, but you'd be surprised, for example, what you need to do and not do. So in this particular demonstration, I've got safety gloves on, I've got glasses, Normally I'd have steel toed shoes on uh, if I was working, these are just regular shoes. But you wanna have eye protection and most of the time you wanna have hand protection. A Couple of things you wanna have before you start the machine up. You wanna make sure that you've got a water source to your machine. In this case, it's gonna be a portable Landa MHC model. Um, or if it's a trailer, obviously you wanna have your water valve on in your trailer. But we've got water to the machine, okay? So that's a must. So we've got a little mist coming out of there, so we know we've got water. You wanna also make sure that um, you've got nobody else around, you've got a safe area there. Your nozzle is locked in and loaded, okay? That's very important. Um, you wanna make sure you've got plenty of fuel, diesel fuel, which we checked on that. And so now, in this particular model, unlike a cold water model, which we'll demonstrate a little bit later, Really all you need to make sure is it's warmed up. You've got the choke on, you've got your, um, you got your key in the ignition. And on these particular units, you wanna make sure that you have no back pressure built up in the machine, okay? I don't recommend starting it one-handed, you know, in general circumstances. So we wanna just open it up. And then I won't be able to talk when this is running. I'm gonna start it up. I'm gonna turn the heat on, we'll feel the heat, then we'll talk a little bit about cooling it down. We wanna make sure once it gets up to temperature, um, then you turn it off. Before you turn the hot water machine off, you wanna make sure that it goes back to the temperature it was before. So, here we go. Okay, so this is a good demonstration. Right now, I've got back pressure built up in the machine. I've got to let that go. So that was an abbreviated version. And what I was trying to show, it's hard with the machine running, was that when the, on, a, on, a, on a hot water machine that's got gun control, you want to take all the pressure out of the line and start the machine up, okay? You can, see, you can tell that it locked up on us pretty quick when we first started. So we had to let go of it, start it with uh, one hand on and one hand off. Uh, not the best way to do it, but in this particular case, um, that's pretty common. In fact, we get phone calls from people saying, hey, my pressure washer won't start. Well, that's because you've got pressure. We've got probably pretty good water pressure coming in here. So we turn that, we, we, we pull the trigger, turn the machine on, it starts very easily. Um, and then what we did is we turned the burner on. And what I wanted to show you was that when the burner's on and the gun's pulled, the machine's got gun control, then what happens is you can see the flame in the coil here, and you can then let go of the trigger, and what a flow switch does is it shuts the burner off when you let go of the trigger, or else it would just keep getting hotter and hotter and hotter, right? So turn the gun back on again, pull the trigger, flow switch comes on, you've got heat again. Then at the end of the time with your machine, what you wanna do is you wanna turn the burner off, and then you wanna run the machine either in low pressure, we turn the variable pressure wand down there, 
or bring it back up to high pressure, whatever you want to do, but you want to make sure it's cool to the touch. You do not want to shut a hot water machine off hot. It builds thermal expansion in the coils. If you shut something off hot, you can push or swell that coil. So you want to cool it back down again, wait till it gets to temperature, and then obviously turn your machine off or release the trigger because you'll still have some buildup in there. You cannot believe how much money in, in repairs and maintenance would be saved if people cooled their machine down. And on the beginning of that, if you've got a cold water machine, you've got it hooked up to a water source at your house, same kind of thing. You want to pull the trigger, turn the choke on, pull the recoil, and then you'll be able to start that machine and then turn the choke back off. Um, because you'll get that kind of vapor lock or you'll get that, that uh, water lock in the machine like that. So seems kind of simple. We hope it was helpful. Uh, we'll post some other kind of videos on these subjects, you know, in the future. Um, thanks, for, thanks for watching today. You can see all of our equipment, all of our videos at www.sceclean.com and appreciate you watching.